Welcome back to Sailing Northern Breeze for episode 12. We're finishing up some DIY work and finally setting sail. We'll be off the docks at Troon and on to the Isle of Arran. Our DIY projects in this episode are the diesel heater, fixing our halyard wrap, reinstalling our wind generator, refreshing our deck sealer, fixing our hot water plumbing and boiler, and replacing our wind instrument. Last year, we replaced our very old Eberspacher heater. We've seen others, such as MJ Sailing, on their prior boat, Elements of Life, select a Chinese brand, which is a huge savings in cost. But since we were going to the Arctic, we wanted a proven and therefore reliable brand name. Unfortunately, about 20% of the time when we used it, it made a horrible noise and then stalled it. So I put a flexible bit so the heat expanding the aluminum will not push on the housing. But there's still some grounding out noise going on. And I need to put a flexible bit on the other end. This is getting really frustrating in the sparkers. The stalling and setting of an error code is inconvenient. The bigger concern, however, is that the temperature reading would then spike to 80 degrees Celsius. That's way too hot and a little frightening, especially in this enclosed compartment. It happened because the shutdown sequence was aborted when the fan stalled out and shut the motor off, and therefore the fan did not run long enough to cool down the burner. We spoke to Eberspacher in Canada and Europe and received promises and a reference to a local service representative in Scotland, but after multiple promise return calls from that service representative and some ghosting from the European Support Centre, we gave up on them helping us. So, as this grounding out of the fan occurs about a minute after the startup, as the diesel burner has started to heat the unit up, I believe that perhaps the issue is caused by heat expansion of the hot air duct on the aft end of the unit. Aluminum expands quite a bit when it gets hot. So, I added a flexible section of pipe to prevent the expanding aluminum ductwork from loading up the unit. That reduced the occurrence, but it didn't correct it entirely. Neil, and with respect, the Eberspacher representative of Canada, suggested that our Jubilee clips, or in the US, Canada, we call them worm clamps, were distorting the housing. We have purchased the plastic housing end reducers from Eberspacher, so believe that they were okay, and the clamps were not likely the issue, but maybe? So, we remove the clamps, the clips, from the forward end, the cool end of the unit where the fan is located. And after a few more startups, the issue seems to have been resolved. For the final month of the trip, the heater worked to design intent. We still aren't 100% confident in the heater, but our confidence is building. We'll let you know if it continues to work out okay. In retrospect, would I buy this heater again? Honestly, I don't know. The old Eberspacher was all metal, entirely. This new one has a plastic outer housing. It is very flexible, and even the slightest pressure deforms it, causing it to ground out against the fan, causing the issue. We believe that our mounting, in the same location on the same old bracket, is 100% okay. The flexibility of the housing is the issue. So, we don't know if we'd spend the extra money for the brand name again. Safety systems work, which is very good. It shut itself off, even if the heater installation needs tender care. Overall, the design weakness is the flexible plastic housing. Since the Chinese copies are basically clones of the European designs, they may have the exact same failure mode. I'll be sure to put my hands physically on any actual unit before we ever purchase another diesel-powered boat heater. Make sure that they don't have this kind of problem. So. We're off for a quick coffee break, and then we're back at it. <laughs> and during the walk, similar to back home, we noticed that folks here use a winter beater to tow their show vehicle or their hot rod around. In this case, it looks like the Porsche is the winter beater, 
and they're towing their hot rod minivan or their work truck. <laughs> That's a little backwards. After that coffee break, we're remounting our wind generator. This machine has done a great job for us. It was a simple installation last year and it worked flawlessly. It was built by Marine Kinetics and they recommended not leaving it up and unattended for months on end, so we removed the head unit last fall. After several attempts, we were finally able to hook up the three 10 gauge wires and it immediately started generating power. Before we do this again, however, we'll replace that electrical connection of those bare wires screwed into a connector with a proper plug. This 45 minute job should only take about 15 minutes the next time. Hey, Marine Kinetics, if you're watching and you can recommend a connector, we'll buy it. And that fender board served a new purpose today. It was Marie's seat. Our next job, address the halyard wrap that hit us twice last season, once when leaving Halifax and again in St. Pierre. A local rigger, Ian Hunter, has been helping us, and he found a halyard retainer similar to this, which will prevent that head sail furler from wrapping the halyard again. Ian took the job of finding and installing it up in the nosebleed seats. Thanks very much, Ian. My season end report is that it worked out great zero halyard wraps this year. And of course, not everything goes well the first time. While working on that wind generator yesterday, I dropped my ratchet into the harbor. Thankfully, Neil's guys were able to lend me a big magnet on a line, and at low tide the following morning, I retrieved it. After a night in the sea, the ratchet wasn't happy, but a little disassembly and flushing and oiling, and it's nearly back to new. Lots of jobs today. So the deck is almost finished with the second coat of Semco. What is Semco? This is Semco. It's a teak sealer, so not a varnish. Teak is an oily wood, which is one of the reasons that it's great for boats. It doesn't dry out and split for many years. This is our third season with a new deck and it still looks great. The last deck had lasted 18 years, but it had many screws in it, and I'm not sure that it was sealed very often. Hopefully with this sealer, we'll get many more years than that this time. Maria also washed the outside of the boat, the hull. She uh, paddled around in that little dinghy and scrubbed the whole outside of the boat, good for her. And plumbing. Our hot water system was the one element of the plumbing that we didn't replace in 2020, so now it's time. We installed new PEX lines with 8mm ID, 10mm OD compression fittings that have leak-free distribution of that hot water. And we also replaced the working bits on the boiler. We've installed a new anode, a new heating element, and a new thermostat for the first time since we've owned the boat. In prior years, it didn't work. We relied on the engine to heat the boiler. This year, with our new bits, we now have plenty of hot water when, when plugged onto a dock. And it's a luxury to have nice hot showers without having to use the facilities of the marina. 
And then back to the Harbor Bar once, once more. This time for a hearty meal and some World Cup rugby. We like this place. And the next day brought a solution to our wind instrument woes. This instrument is mounted at the top of our mast. You can see in a prior video where we installed it in St. Pierre. And we sailed from there to Newfoundland and then across to Greenland. And it failed six days onto that journey. Garmin, respectfully, sent us a warranty replacement and had it shipped to us in Iceland. In Iceland, we put on the second wind instrument. It also lasted six days. So, Garmin was embarrassed and supportive. They agreed to send another replacement and also, this time, to have one of their technicians help us install it and diagnose any issues that there might be. It turned out that the third time was the charm and the new instrument did its job all through 2023 without an issue. Kudos to Garmin for standing behind their product and providing on-site support from a Canadian purchase to replacement parts in Iceland and Scotland and even having a technician support on the top of our mast. We couldn't ask for better after-sales support. Good job, guys. The tech technician chose to use the crane to install the new instrument instead of just being hauled up on a halyard, and that required us pulling the boat up very close to shore. And then finally, what we've been waiting for. 13 days after arriving back at the boat, we're off the dock and on our way. Here we go. We're free of the dock. And it's finally, finally time. So where are we going? We're going right out this way. To the Firth of Clyde. See you on the other side. And we're underway, leaving true Nyad Haven after 11 months here. High tide's one o'clock. We got two and a half meters at the narrow point, so we're good. Lots of water. There's the wood mill. And the other harbor. We see another super yacht as we're leaving, anchored just outside of Troon. We're on a short trip today, just a few miles across to Braddock on the Isle of Arran. We took this shakedown cruise to test out a few things, such as our repaired auto helm, which worked out well. Only one small hiccup, our paddle wheel speed sensor isn't working, which is likely due to it sitting in the water and growing biome over it over the last week. It should free up as we get moving. Batteries are both at 12.3 volts, we're good. Batteries on? Yep. Oh, it may not work because we don't have boat speed. Remember how to bypass that? You think you can figure it out? I think so, but I can't figure it out in the spare. We had a pleasant night at anchor just off Brodick Beach and celebrated with a sundowner. Pulling the anchor from our first mooring and we're testing out the new Milo's. I'm talking to the video. Now we don't have to yell at each other when we're doing anchoring. We can just talk normally. There were five of us anchored here last night off of Brodick or Brodick. As we retrieve our anchor chain, it piles up in the chain lock. You can hear the windlass running, which Marie is managing with a controller in her left hand. Then you'll see her reach into the lock and knock the pile of chain over so that it continues to run freely and doesn't back up into the windlass mechanism. We're going to buy a new chain for next season, which should be more slippery than our rusty old chain and therefore hopefully won't pile up and save this awkward job. At times you hear that windlass quietly from 40 feet away. At other times you hear Milo transmitting it from Marie to me. Hey, salad on the anchor. That's a lot of salad. Yes, that is. Surprised it helped. The salad had good roots.
Yep, those are the roots. <laughs> On our second day, we made a short trip down to Lamlesh, where, once again, Ian Hunter helped us out by delivering a package from Troon to us from his own sailboat. Thanks, Ian. After motoring around the Lamlesh Harbour for a while, watching very closely for rapid changes in depth near shore, we found a nice anchorage off the old church and were greeted by a couple of the locals. Seals and swans. Passing in the night. S-cubed. In Scotland. S quadratic. How is Scotland seal and s sunshine and swans all S's? Oh, I see. <laughs> you miss the sunshine. And sailing to the fifth power. And from shore, our breeze is resting nicely at anchor this time without the kelp. We had an afternoon tea and a quiet night. And finally, today we're headed offshore finally. To Bally Castle in Northern Ireland. Good morning. It's August 17th. That lump on the horizon is Elsa Craig, the island of Elsa Craig. It was interesting today because over the VHF radio we heard British war vessel, British war vessel will be doing live firing practice within the vicinity of Elsa Craig, within four miles of Elsa Craig. At the time we were eight miles from Elsa Craig. And they were rather loud, but we were well clear. And then later, we heard them on the VHF saying they were going to do some more live firing exercises. And another sailor got on and said, hey, wait a minute, I'm in that zone. And they said, continue on your course. You are safe. Do not deviate from your course. Well, that was rather interesting. I'm glad that wasn't us. Anyways, sounds like it's finished now. They're really loud. This day got rather scary, but I'll save that for next time. So once again, we'll thank all of those who have helped us. First, Ian Hunter and Neil again, Marine Kinetics, along with the folks at Garmin, from their call center in Kansas to their local service guys here in Scotland at B Limited, Boat Electrics and Electronics. And I think that's appropriate to add here that we are not sponsored or receiving any deals for these thank yous. They are genuine and hopefully helpful to other sailors looking for similar support. So we'll see you soon in episode 13, Lucky 13, where we take that scary ride into Bally Castle. And when we land on the dock, we are ready to sell the boat. We set a new speed record for the boat that day, hopefully never to be matched. See you soon. Ciao.